Intonation. A primary responsibility of the tubist is to provide a stable basis of intonation for the ensemble. Good intonation requires a dependence on many of the fundamental skills, so first start by making sure that you are working towards complete control of breath and tone. Establishing a consistent tone will make it easier for you to determine when you are not playing in tune and for others to adjust to you when you are providing a stable foundation. The development of aural skills is a slow process for many. Students will have large differences in their innate ability to recognize the subtleties of pitch. These skills, though, can be learned and developed even when students are initially challenged by some of the simplest of aural tasks. On the tuba, development of the ear will come as exercises such as singing and buzzing are incorporated into a practice routine. I also see a correlation to ear development with working on scale patterns and repeating simple routines consistently. I try to make the first note of every day the same, and because of this habit, eventually I was able to hear that pitch in my head without playing it. We also develop an ability to hear other pitches that are presented prominently, such as the tuning note in an ensemble or the first note of a solo that we've practiced for months. While that skill is limited in its application, it does tell me that we can learn and grow in our aural abilities. Let's talk about some basics. There are three ways to adjust intonation on the tuba. Adjusting the embouchure, adjusting the air, and adjusting the instrument. I like to tackle the problem first by making sure that the instrument is ready to play in tune. We have the ability to adjust a main tuning slide as well as ones that are associated with each valve. The valve slides only affect pitch on the notes using those valves. We can determine which slide goes with which valve simply by tracing them back to the valve section. The main slide will adjust pitch on every note we play and is usually located after the valve section. Pushing in on a slide will make the instrument shorter and raise the pitch, while pulling out will lengthen the tuba, lowering the pitch. Instruments are manufactured so most slides should be out at least a little so that the player has the ability to push in or to pull out. It is also important to note that when the instrument is cold, it will tend to play flat. So if we tune before the instrument has reached playing temperature, we will eventually be sharp as the instrument warms. With the instrument warmed up, tune the instrument using an electronic tuner. I use the Tonal Energy Tuner app, but almost all are very reliable and work well. If you are playing a B-flat tuba, play a second line B-flat with a pure consistent tone. Note where the pitch begins and how consistent it stays. It is not uncommon to have trouble getting to the center of the pitch at the beginning, so stabilize the pitch before planning your adjustment. Since no valves are used, the B-flat can only be adjusted using the main slide, and we will make it the basis of all other adjustments. Now that we have the main slide set, we can adjust the valve slides. Eventually, as players progress, they may choose to move these slides while they are playing, but for now, we will set them up for basic success. Tune the second valve slide to the first space A.
the first slide to the first space A flat. The third valve has a couple of options. I prefer that it be tuned to a first line G flat or the D flat below it. The reason I choose these is that we don't typically use the third valve by itself, so tuning it to a G or a D would be less practical. Also, it is important to know that notes using multiple valves have a tendency to be sharp, and so tuning the third slide to the G flat or D flat allows you to compensate by setting that slide just a little lower. One thing to point out is that you should make sure that you have already tuned the second valve slide, otherwise intonation on this note will be affected if we move that second slide later. Choosing between a G flat and a D flat is your option. G flat is most likely a more stable note in terms of clarity of production, and it is also located on a part of the overtone series that is very stable. The D flat, though, is more likely to show up in the band repertoire, so it might be more practical to, to, to choose D flat. Typically, the D flat is sharper than the G flat, so that third slide might be even a little more farther out. If you are lucky enough to have a fourth valve, tune it to a C, as that is the note played the most frequently. Even after we carefully tune the instruments with this process, there will still be inconsistencies that need adjusting. Our instruments obey the laws of physics, and some notes just naturally have intonation tendencies. I have already mentioned two concerns. Cold instruments tend to be flat, and notes with multiple valves tend to be sharp. There are also notes that have tendencies because of where they fall on the overtone series. Knowing the tendencies are all part of setting yourself up for success. By the way, if you have a fourth valve, use it. That C will be quite sharp using one and three, and the main reason you paid more for a four valve tuba is to improve the intonation on that note. The same thing is true of B natural. Finger it two and four, since one, two, and three is very sharp. All of the things that I have mentioned so far relate to adjusting the instrument. And like I said, it is where we should start. Adjusting the embouchure and the air can be quite challenging for even advanced players. So relying on an instrument that is set up for success can really help. If you do need to adjust with these other methods, I would encourage you first to think about what the air is doing. In a previous video, I mentioned that faster air is used for higher notes and slower air for low, lower notes. This principle continues to be true when dealing with intonation. If we speed up the air, the pitch will rise, and slowing down the air lowers the pitch. It is easier to lower the pitch than it is to raise it with this method. To show its potential, I will play a B flat followed by an A and return to a B flat, first using valves and then without. This exercise, I call pitch bends, develops control of the speed of air and is very challenging. You can begin by monitoring how far the pitch drops as you slow the air. Eventually work to recover the air speed and return to the center of pitch. In general, though, do not attempt these exercises until you confidently are producing a stable, consistent tone. The final method of adjusting pitch is by adjusting the embouchure. In reality, this method tends to be more of a troubleshooting of other fundamental technique problems, and a side benefit is often improvement of intonation. As we adjust the embouchure, it affects the air and can change the pitch quite dramatically. If we firm the corners, 
It often focuses the air and, and the pitch will rise. If we lower the jaw and open up the oral cavity, the pitch often lowers. The effects of adjusting the embouchure are often more noticeable in the tone. So relying on adjusting the pitch this way can often negatively affect sound. So focus on adjusting pitch first with the instrument, then with the air, and finally with the embouchure. There is still a lot to think about with intonation that I will not be able to address in this video. The main point I would like to stress is that intonation should always be something that we are thinking about. When we get lazy, the intonation will gravitate towards where it naturally wants to go, and that often is not where it is pleasing to our audience or colleagues. Monitor it constantly and know that it can change dramatically without us totally understanding why. Pitch also is a relationship we have with one another, and being able to adjust to others will make the best experience in ensembles. Thanks again for tuning into this video and leave a comment if you find these videos helpful.